Hello everyone and welcome back to Microsoft Flights in 2020 where I'm going to do a range test of the Top Mark Studios F22A and we are going to see how far I get while maintaining full speed, presumably past Mach 2. Now that means that this is not the optimal range of the plane which I guess would be flying it under Mach 1 for a ferry flight but then again the F22 is capable of super cruise which means staying at a high Mach without the afterburner on. So it's a little bit complicated. Maybe its optimal range would be at Mach 2. I'm not sure. Uh, like the Concorde, of course, would fly at Mach 2 to maximize its range. But um, not entirely sure about that. We'll see. Uh, the interest as far as all these range tests, by the way, is A, because the main thing we do in flight sim is go from place to place. Uh, so knowing the range of the plane is sort of important. B, the range as stated in the menu is never right. And see, it really depends on how you fly it, right? So if the manual says it has this kind of range, but then when you fly it, you don't get that range, which happens a lot, uh, then you know you're not flying it exactly right, and then you can adjust, uh, like, when to light the afterburner, at what height to try and break Mach 1, for instance, with these kinds of planes, and, you know, at what climb rate you should be going at, stuff like that, that, uh, you know, Concord pilots will be familiar with. Uh, anyway, so we're going to try it out and see how, how I do. Among some of the other planes I've flown, I have been working on the range with the F-104, for instance. Uh, that's a tricky one sometimes. Oh, now that's interesting. Uh, our multifunction displays aren't showing up. Now, uh, the plane had been updated to 1.1.7. And I had a problem with the multifunction displays not showing up. So I reverted to 1.1.5 and then the multifunction displays showed up. But, you know, so I tested that and then I decided to start recording the video. Uh, so, of course, I reloaded. I just went to the menu and I started the new flight. And now they're not working again. So, that's not good. Um... I think I'm just gonna proceed. Maybe I'll let me restart the game and then we'll proceed. And hopefully the multifunction displays will show up. I'm not sure. Well, I guess this is gonna be an experiment to find out. Okay, restarting fixed it. So maybe uh, with the 1.1.7 version, all I needed to do was restart the game to fix the uh, multifunction displays. But. Uh yeah, but on, in that case, with the 1.1.7 version, I hadn't already loaded the plane before and reloaded it, so... A little spinny thing is saying, okay, we're clear now. Alright, let's see how this goes. You can see the fuel display with the fuel flow there. Um, this plane was a little bit wiggly on the surface here. I'm gonna try and not throttle up so much. Probably better for mileage anyway. Okay, uh, up we get. Okay, gear up. All right. Edwards Tower Ray Eyes Road. All right, well, we see our map there. Everything's very convenient around here. Plane looking good. Edwards looking good too. Got the external tanks and everything. Actually, with the F-104, a uh, key thing is when to drop the external tanks, since with that one, with the Sim Skunk Works F-104, the external tanks actually do produce extra drag, so... This plane has significant wing and significant power. Okay, we are at 40,000 feet. I will coax it past Mach 1 now. And that's Mach 1. I haven't even lit the afterburners. We'll see if we can avoid that. If I, well, let's see. If I light the afterburner... Wow, it, it quadruples the amount of fuel we use. So, uh, you know what? If we can get to better Mach numbers without doing that, maybe that'd be a good thing. I mean, there's a range of afterburner. We could light it a little bit if it turns out to be a good idea. 
The HUD does have our time to go, I think. That's the TTG there, two hours and 35 minutes. We certainly don't have two hours and 35 minutes worth of fuel to get to Cape Canaveral right now. We've got 22,000 pounds of fuel and 17,000 pounds per hour. So we've got about an uh, hour and maybe 20 minutes tops. Well, depending on how we glide, we're at Mach 1.24 right now. So we will see how it all balances out. Past Mach 1.3, we should be able to climb and gain Mach number like that. Well, I'm gonna use some afterburn here just a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna level out 50,000 here and try and gain some more speed. Don't know about the cabin pressure. I'm a little bit suspicious of what it's trying to tell me. Mach 1.6. Uh, I really don't want to use any more of the afterburner here. It does not seem to be able to hold Mach 1.6 like that, though we're going up a little. Uh, maybe we can go higher. I don't know what the optimal altitude for that is. In theory, higher is better. But that cabin pressure, the top number doesn't change to 8.6 there. The bottom number changes. <laughs> and that makes me worry that the 8.6 is the limit and 9.9 .9 is the situation. That would be a differential between the internal and outer. Uh, well, yeah, it's gone yellow. So... That's probably not good. I'll see now, is there something that can help my oxygen mixture? Inoperative. Inoperative. Well, let's try and cruise here. It's not using as much fuel at full throttle as it was lower. But it's also not accelerating much. <laughs> We're at Mach 1.7, and the external fuel tanks have been drained. I don't know, do they auto jettison or no? They're still here, but they're gone from that display. That's inoperative. Well, I guess we're sort of stuck with them. We're getting close to Mach 2. I'll try and crawl down at Mach 2 and see if we can super cruise like that. This is about Concordish kind of situation. Okay, Mach 2. Okay, well, the no when the nozzle's yellow, the afterburner's on, I think, and that's afterburner off right there. Alright. Let's see. Well, we're no longer at Mach 2. We're at Mach 1.94 and going down. And we're actually going down in altitude too, so. Well, we'll see where we end up. I got it to Mach 2. It's not holding at Mach 2 without the afterburner. We'll see where it can hold. Right now, maybe we have an hour and a half of fuel. And it's an hour and a half to Cape Canaveral. But our speed is going down now. So the time to go is going to increase and our remaining fuel is just going to decrease. We're currently over Arizona. It's all the way down to Mach 1.71. What was that? 7.9. No, yeah, it's Mach 1.7, 1.69 now, and still our altitude's going down too. So the Super Cruise thing, I mean, maybe it'll hold above Mach 1, but it's not looking great overall. We'll try and go higher, even though the cabin pressure thing is sort of iffy. Let's see if 60,000 feet is doable. No, I'm back to full afterburner again.
Well, 60,000 feet. Well, even with the full afterburn, it's slowing down now. Yeah, well, it's not going to get to Mach 2 like that. Well, I'm just going to give up. I'll go back down. Try and keep as much speed as possible. And I've cut the afterburner off here. We are not going to get to Cape Canaveral, but then again, we weren't technically supposed to be able to. Well, we're level at 53,540 and Mach 1.49 and probably going down? Yeah, going down. Not sure about the super cruising with this. Maybe a modicum of afterburner is going to be necessary here. Just to keep things at a good clip. Once we hit Mach 1.3, it's going to lose speed very quickly after all. Now, with that much afterburner, we can hold Mach 1.46 right now. Time to go, 1 hour and 42 minutes. We do not have that long. We have less than an hour. Well, we are over New Mexico right now. And the map says maybe we can go 800 nautical miles from here. Texas is big. <laughs> uh, maybe we can make Houston. I don't know. I mean, I think we should be able to go beyond Houston. But, well, I tried to take out the little bit of afterburner I had on. And let's see if we could hold our speed now that we've gotten a bit lighter, of course. But we are losing the speed a bit still. Might not be too bad though. I mean if the speed ticks down at such a rate that we'll be out of fuel before it gets down too low, that's not too bad. Well we are now over Texas and I'm very much looking at Houston as a landing spot. It's about 400 nautical miles to Houston from here and maybe uh, 600 or so to New Orleans. We are technically super cruising right now. We, are, we do not have the afterburner on and we're holding at Mach 1.43. But that is only because we have, you know, not all of our fuel remaining. So I say I have the afterburner off. Uh, it has sort of the afterburner animation on there. It just doesn't have the yellow on the nozzle here. Fuel flow is sort of moderate. I mean, again, we have about half an hour left. Well, now we don't have any afterburners. We have about 20 minutes left of fuel. We're at Mach 1.54. Again, we are lighter now, so it's a little bit easier. We're at 49,000 feet. And, yeah, uh, still looking at Houston as our landing spot. Unless I thought that this plane had some serious ability to glide to get further I think we're going for Ellington Field okay Joker fuel now I believe we are passing by Fort Hood actually still a ways from Houston trying to decide when to descend with this and suddenly there's a bunch of clouds Lots and lots of clouds right here. But I think they clear up up ahead where Houston will be. Okay, well, I'm satisfied we should descend. I sure hope the tanks don't have a whole lot of unusable fuel. We are below Mach 1, we're at Mach 0.95. 
41,000 feet. Yes, we have bingo fuel now. Well, it wouldn't be a proper range test if we didn't end up with bingo fuel. Oh, we have another showboater right there. There's an F-18 that just flew by. No, nope, I can't be doing anything fancy. I'm tight on fuel. I tried to tune Ellington's tack hand, but that didn't seem to work. There it goes again. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure how to use this system right now. Not that I should be in any trouble with finding Ellington Field. Well, I thought there wouldn't be clouds here, but there are clouds here. Up oh, there is the runway. And it's auto flapped, so no problems there. Just verify. Alright. And touchdown. Well, no problems for the landing. Um, can we take this? I think we can take this taxiway. Or, well, maybe strictly not the best, but we'll go with it. I'll let the bus go ahead. I, I, I don't know, I'm just gonna park right here. Oh, there's some fuel. Alright. So we have set down. Uh, interesting thing going on at the wingtip there. Alright. Well, uh, let me go to the map and verify the exact distance that we traveled. Okay, so the map has the distance between Edwards and Ellington at 1,200 nautical miles. I did that in an hour and 34 minutes. For the most part, we were hanging at uh, Mach 1.44 to Mach 1.5. And, of course, it takes extra time as far as speeding up and slowing down. And that is the result with the F-22 while trying to get to Mach 2, but not quite managing to keep Mach 2. I didn't think keeping it on full afterburner was a good idea. After all, if we consume half the fuel at Mach 1.44, trying to hold Mach, point two, uh, Mach, uh, sorry, trying to hold Mach 2 is not a good idea. I mean, if we could get to Mach 3, that's a different story, but that wasn't happening. So, yeah. Since we could consume half the fuel and stay at Mach 1.4, that seemed the best bet. So, yep, but of course, uh, it doesn't look unreasonable that if we managed to fuel a little bit better, maybe didn't go past Mach 1, just kept subsonic, we could make this kind of range. But that's boring, isn't it? So, yep, uh, I'll probably be flying it like this, and I'll just plan, if I do long flights with it, I'll plan my legs to be about 1,200 nautical miles apart. So, with that, Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.